Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 123, I think, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, you might notice that the podcast sounds either, if I've worked out the gear, either it sounds way better, or if I don't know how to use it because I didn't read the instruction manual as normal, I just fucking plugged the thing in and turned it on and was like, oh, it'll probably fucking work. It probably sounds a lot worse. But I'm, I'm hoping if I've done everything properly, it sounds a lot better. So um, what I've done is thanks to all of the wonderful, amazing supporters on Patreon, I have bought new gear. So I've got a new microphone and I have a new uh, microphone arm holder thing and um basically i just i don't know the, the the podcast is something i've been trying to fix for a long time because i know that the the, the audio was always kind of spacey and a bit echoey and i needed a, a a microphone that was close to my face but you know i had that little handheld one and then all you guys started complaining about oh we can hear it when it bangs against the thing and there was lots of popping going on so uh, i decided to just wait uh, with the Patreon stuff and save up and then buy something really good so that I will never have to to, to do it again. So uh, I've got this microphone. It's a, what is it? It's a fucking, um, it is a Shure SM7B. It's the, the podcast microphone that uh, Joe Rogan uses, I believe. Um, and uh, from my little test that I've done, it sounds a lot better. So uh, I hope that this sounds better. Please do give me feedback. Let me know. If it sounds better, tell me. Uh, if it sounds worse, tell me. And if you have any tips or anything on how I can make it sound better for you guys, please do let me know. Uh, because if you don't tell me, I won't know because there's no comments on fucking podcasts and then it will just sound shit forever. So uh, if this is good, tell me. If it's not, let me know. Um, and once again, thank you very much to all of the amazing Patreon supporters because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to afford to upgrade the gear because uh, the podcast uh, costs money instead of makes money. <laughs> uh, but I really like doing it, so I do it for you cunts. Uh, I'm recording this one on... Uh Thursday night, I'm in here in the warehouse. Uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, that's why the background looks weird. Uh, I need to get a little... Because the, the podcast arm that I got that the microphone's connected to, um, it, it attaches to a desk. So I need to get like a, a... I need to build something in my normal, regular podcast setup. I need to build a tape. Put, put, either put a table there or build a little piece of wood or something. I don't know. I need to figure out what I'm doing there because I do want to move over there because it looks a lot better. But I'm just sitting here at the desk where I normally edit and write videos uh, to do the podcast this time. So... Uh, that's why it looks like how it does. But anyway, um, I've had a pretty good week, man. I've uh, I've had a, a very very busy, very productive week. So I've just been uh, just running around. You know, the comedy specials out. So I'm still promoting that. And I'm organising like interviews and stuff. I'm probably going to go on. I, I just did uh, Luke Kidgel's podcast, which was fun. Uh, that's out now. If you want to listen to it, it's just Google the Luke Kidgel podcast. Uh, I'm also going to do. I'm also flying to Brisbane. Uh, next week, I'm going to be doing the Josh Wade show, which I'm really keen and excited for. I haven't done that for ages, man. I think I was on the first episode and, and it's, it's like so much better because Josh has been doing it for longer and it's bigger and it's, uh, it's like, it's cool. It's, he's got like a little fucking Joe Rogan vibe and he's like interviewing, uh, you know, fucking prostitutes and ex-drug addicts and people from Antifa. It's really, really cool what he's doing. So uh, I'm excited to go back there and do it again. Um, <clears throat> So that'll be fun, uh, and uh, I, I might try and do, I might, I don't know, I need to use my fucking radio connections and organize some radio interviews, but I just, I don't know, I can't be fucked. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, ah, no one listens to radio, but they be, but they do, they do, so I should fucking do it. But you know what, no one listening in their car is going to pull over the car and buy the comedy special, like that's what I'm thinking, like that's why I'm like, oh, I think podcast is better so I don't know what I'll do. I don't know. I might organize some. It might be fun to do. It at least it'll at least look cool for the fucking. Uh... You know what? It'll give me practice. I, I do. I do like doing interviews because they're fun. I like um just getting on someone else's thing and trying to make it mine. Um. But anyway, that's fucking boring, dude. I've I. I am, so. Also, sorry if I'm a bit tired. It's fucking 10.30 at night here. That's I've just been sitting here doing fucking comedy special shit. 
uh, all day and uh, trying to film. Um, man, I I'm so, I don't know if you guys can, guys can tell, but I'm fucking so sunburned, like just in my face. I'm really, really sunburned, and I and I, it, it took me fucking ages to work out why and how it happened, man. Like Luke, noted Luke noticed it because guys, I haven't been outside. I've been in the fucking warehouse or at home, and then I did I did the comics lounge last night. No, Tuesday night, which was fun, but that's at night. I haven't been around any fucking sun. So, but I was sunburned, and I was trying to work out how the fuck I got sunburned when I wasn't near the sun, right? So I didn't even notice that I was sunburned. I thought that I had like a, a like a rash or something, like my face just kind of hurt a little bit and it was itchy and it was red. And because I wasn't out in the sun, I just didn't think, oh, I'm sunburned because I wasn't in the fucking sun. Luke Kidgel pointed out to me, I got into radio and he looks at my face and he goes, dude, you're really sunburned. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I haven't been in the sun. He goes, no, nah, you're fucking sunburned as. And I was like, I, I just like, I don't know. I just felt my face and I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's what this feels like. That's fucking sunburned. And then I'm trying to work out when the fuck did I get sunburned because I haven't left the house or the warehouse and I've only been walking around at nighttime. I've been trying to fucking figure it out and I worked it out. I remember because I was sitting here in front of me, there's a window, right? And I sat in front of the window and I set up my phone and I did an Instagram live stream for 10 minutes in the sun. I sat next to a window for 10 minutes and I got fucking really sunburned. That's how white I am, man. That's like unbearably white. That's so fucking white, man. That, that doesn't make any sense. I got sunburned because I sat next to a fucking window. It's, dude, it is in Australia almost winter. It is not sunny. It's cold. I'm wearing this, I don't know if you can tell or you, if you can hear it, but I'm wearing one of those fucking sleeping bag jackets that is just full of down because it is so fucking cold at the moment and I'm still getting sunburned. That's how fucking white I am. It's ridiculous, man. But, you know, I've got to, just got to, so now I'm like, oh, okay, so I can't go outside and I've got to fucking avoid the window. So I've just put, bl- I put I, actually, I can't afford blinds for the warehouse yet. So I've hung up. It's fucking pathetic. The warehouse has big, giant, you know, you've seen a warehouse. They've got big, giant windows. I've hung up uh, the carpet that was in my old storage unit. I've hung that up with giant clamps from my dad because he's a fucking carpenter. He had these big ass clamps. So I've just clamped up carpet over the fucking windows. And now, because it's carpet and not a blind, they can't go up and down. So I just I just have no sunlight. I'm like a fucking vampire in here. <laughs> Dude, my life is so sad. People are like, oh, bro, you're fucking killing it, man. You're living the life. Dude, I hung carpets up over the window because I can't fucking sit near a window without getting sunburned. My life sucks, dude. And I'm, and I'm in a warehouse surrounded by brothels. <laughs> Man, I feel I, I, I feel so sorry whenever I order Uber Eats, which I haven't been doing too often because it's, it's you know it's expensive. But I do do it because I can't drive, and uh, as much as I as much as I don't enjoy spending money on food, I, I also like staying fucking alive. So I've started doing the Uber Eats thing and ordering it, and man, that Uber Eats shit is so unbelievably convenient like it's fucked man i don't have to talk to it's that that shit was made for me it's it's like cuz so often i remember before all these apps came out so often i would be like oh man i really want to order a pizza but i i'm i just wouldn't do it because a i didn't want to talk to the cunt on the phone uh and b i didn't want to talk to the cunt when he gave i didn't i didn't want to when he, you know, when they give you the pizza and you have to pay for it, and then they fucking act like they deserve a tip, it's like no, dude. 
we're in Australia, all right? Tips only exist in America because their fucking wage system is so broken that for some reason business owners can get away with paying them less money and customers have to foot the fucking bill. Do you, uh, that, if, that's so insane because I remember we don't tip in Australia because we pay people a fucking living wage. That shit, when I, because you know, you used to read, I used to read all the time online, uh, like arguments about tipping and like, oh, you have to tip and you have to tip this 20% or 10% or whatever the fuck it is. And I would read this shit and I was like, why is tipping such a fucking thing? And then I started looking into it and, and I found out that in serving things, you can like, you're allowed to pay a waiter less because they make it up in tips. Like, that's the most fucked up thing ever. And the, the counter argument to that is, oh, but tips make them a better employee. And it's like, well, I ha- in Australia, we have very polite people and we're paying everyone a fucking living wage. All that that's done in America is some genius businessman has tricked his customers into not only paying for the food that he makes, but also paying for his staff too. Like that's such a fucking genius move that it that it's insane. I can't believe that shit, dude. That is so fucking smart. It's and and it's it's not only that, it's like it's they've done it so well that it's a part of culture and now if people who work are like hey man i would really like to be paid a fair wage that's socialism it's it's so genius man for the business owner not for the fucking people i don't know man this shit's crazy i don't pretend to know anything about fucking american politics you know what it is you know what the problem is there and i've said this so many times but hey i'm gonna say it again There's too many people in America. There's 300 million people in America. 300 people, 300 million people can't agree on anything. That's too many people, bro. Everyone's like, oh, America's so divided. It's like, not really, man. It's just really big. And it's, it's, and America is kind of fucking 15 countries under the one banner. Texas, that's a country, man. That's not a state. That's a country. All right? Fucking LA, that's not even on Earth. That's 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 aliens, man. I don't know. Everyone's like, oh, America's so divided. It's like, yeah, no shit. When have, when have fucking... How hard is it to get your group of seven friends to decide which nightclub they're going to? Impossible. So imagine if instead of seven friends deciding on which nightclub to get fucked up at, it was 350 million people deciding how should we pay for health care. Like, there's no way that anyone's ever going to agree with with anything on that in, in that fucking place. And that's why... That's why there's so many famous people in America that you've never heard of. Dude... Every single day I stumble across on Instagram like a, like a really famous rapper or a really famous Instagram girl or an incredibly famous like influencer. Like I reckon every week I just I find a new rapper that has like 5 million Instagram followers. Like that's fucking heaps. 5 million. That's famous, man. I've only got 20,000. I just hit 21,000 and I was like, fuck yeah, go me. I'm going to keep on going. Follow me on Instagram, by the way. I want to be, I want to be famous, but never heard of like 5 million. You would think that, that a rapper walking around with fucking millions of dollars in the bank account and, you know, fucking 10 million Instagram followers, you'd think that you would hear of them. But I see those cunts every fucking week. And it's not like they were famous and then they blew it and they just have the followers. They have, like, active and they're new. Or not new, they've been around for, like, five years and you just never found out about them. And it's like, a f- a fucking, of course they can't solve their problems. They got too many fucking famous rappers. (laughs) 
Man. Oh, I forgot to tell you about this, guys. My, my girlfriend fucked me over, man. When I, when I did the... She fucking wrecked me. When I, when I did the, the premiere tour for the comedy special, right? I went to Brisbane. And, and I was by myself because we were selling fuck all tickets. Uh, we had to keep costs down, so I had to do it by myself. And it was cool. It was kind of like my first tour where I did it all myself. I did the door. Uh, I met everyone. I, 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 did, I, you know, I did all the tickets and I sold all of the merchandise and I took all the photos and I organized the sound and everything. It was kind of cool. It was like real self-sufficient. I got to do it all again. It was fun. Um, <clears throat> but uh, there's a fucking reason why. Uh, if we can avoid it, Lewis doesn't do everything because, uh, I, you know, obviously I'm focusing on the show. I'm a bit of a fucking idiot. So if I have to do uh, focus, if I have to try and focus on telling good jokes and figure out how the fuck uh, we're going to sell T-shirts and where we're going to do the merch desk and how where the best lighting for selfies is and, and sound and, and just all shit, all that fucking shit that a tour manager uh, does, um, I'm going to forget shit. Because I'm thinking about the show. I don't give a, I don't give a fuck about how the show works. I'm I'm worried about doing a good performance, obviously. So <laughs> we get to we get to Brisbane, and my girlfriend she was texting me like the recaps of like you need to talk to this person, and they're in charge of this, and and then you need to go into this room and then do that, blah blah blah, all that kind of shit. So my girlfriend. She texts me and she's like, hey, so the girl in charge of the Brisbane cinema that you need to talk to, her name is Magenta. And I was like, okay, Magenta. I will remember that. I need to, I need to speak to Magenta. And then she sends me another text. She goes, haha, you should call her Violet to piss her off. Because, you know, Violet, Magenta, it's a kind of purple. And I was like, haha, that would be funny. Uh, anyway, so about two hours after that, I get to the venue. And uh, I walk up to the desk and the last name that I remember was Violet. <laughs> so I walk up to the desk and I go, oh, hello, uh, I'm looking for uh, Violet. And then the dude goes, uh, Violet, uh, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm looking for, for Violet. She runs the, she runs the venue here. She's in charge of the cinema. And he's like, uh, I don't know anyone called Violet, man. Because he, he's, you know, the, the bitch's name is Magenta. And I've come in saying a fucking similar color, like an absolute dumb cunt. <laughs> that'd be like, that'd be like if, if your name was Crystal and some fucking idiot comes in. is like, hey, yeah, hey, I'm looking for Geode. I'm looking for Geode. Yeah, Geode. I don't know, I can't remember her name, but I do know that it was a fucking shiny rock. I'm looking for Geode, Sapphire, Emerald, Diamond, Pearl. I don't know, I'm just saying like titles of Pokemon games now. Silver, Gold, Platinum, Red, Yellow, X, Y, Ruby. <laughs> um... So anyway, I, I'm at the desk going like, nah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to talk to Violet, man. I'm looking for Violet, I'm like a fucking idiot. And he goes, uh, uh, who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm Lewis Spears. I'm, I'm renting like Cinema 2 or whatever the fuck it was. And he goes, oh, oh, okay, yeah, I, I know who you need to speak to. And then the girl, he goes and gets the girl and he didn't tell me her name. So she walks up and I'm like, oh, you must be Violet. And she's like, no, my name's Magenta. And I was like, oh, fucking... I'm so that was because that was just such a fucking dumb. It's like I'm a. It's like I've got no memory, dude. I have no short term memory at all. That was just that was just the last name that I heard. Ugh, Violet. It's a color. That's her fucking name. Idiot was magenta. But you know what? Hey, hey. You know what? Don't call your kid magenta. That's a dumb fucking name. How about that? Uh, if you don't want to get confused for other colors, how about don't pick a wanky fucking name? Magenta. Oh, did I finish telling you about Uber Eats? No, I don't think I did. <laughs> See, that's how bad my fucking memory is, dude. I can't even remember the shit that I bring up. I don't even notice when I, when I bring something up and I stop talking about it and I move on. I don't even notice that I do that. 
I bring something up with the intention to talk about it and then just go somewhere else. Uber Eats, that's what I was talking about. So that the Uber Eats shit, man, because because the the place where I'm at is like a it's it's a it's a scary area, man. Like it's not nice. It's a warehouse district. It, there's no street lights. It's surrounded by brothels. <laughs> so I can't say it. I'm saving it for the stage. But some something happened here that I'll talk about on stage. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Some, something happened. There's no street lights. And I order Uber Eats at like fucking 10.30 p.m. at night. <laughs> 10.30 p.m. at night. And I, I, when the Uber Eats people get here and they call me, they're like freaking out. Because there's no, like there's no markings outside the warehouse. There's no like this business or that number. It's nothing. So they get to they get to outside the warehouse. There's no doors. It just it looks like they're pull. It look it looks like the start of a fucking Law and Order f- episode where they pull up and then some guy comes out with a knife and fucking stabs them to death and they're never seen again. That's what this place looks like. And <laughs> it's fucking rude. But what am I gonna do, man? I like I want to eat my fucking pasta. And I, I come out and I'm like, I'm huge, man. And they're, they're always like Indian or Asian, like, like a, they're always like really small. So I'm like the biggest person they've ever fucking seen. I come out of a, an unmarked warehouse in the dark at fucking 11 p.m. at night and I walk up to them. I'm like three times their size and I, I can see the fear in their eyes. <laughs> I can see them. They're holding their little Uber Eats bag and they're just looking at me and they're like, oh, oh, this is how I die. This is how I fucking die. Delivering pasta to a warehouse district. I can see them going, how could I be this stupid to do this? Of course, this is where I would get murdered. (laughs) But I've worked it out. I have to be like from ages away. I have to be like, hello. Hi. Thank you so much for coming over. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna come over and grab it. Thank you so much. And then they and then they're like, oh god, thank god he's not a fucking murderer. Oh dude, I scared the shit out of my neighbor. Like the the people next to me. Cause I'm like surrounded by warehouses. So it was one night it was fucking like Real late. I'm here. I'm always here really late because I just, I don't know. I get here at like fucking 9 a.m. and then I just hang out here until, and I, you know, sometimes I leave at 11 p.m. So I spend like, you know, more than 12 hours here just working on shit, which is probably unhealthy, but hey, I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I've, I've been here for ages and because I don't drive right, there's no car. So if you're outside the warehouse, Outside my warehouse, it looks like you're the only person here. There's one car in the street. That's it. So unless you notice that my lights are on on the inside, you don't you don't know that there's someone else here, right? So <laughs> one night, um, I'm here, and uh, fucking what happened? Oh, that's right. So I'm here, and and because I because to use the bathroom here, I don't have a bathroom attached to my warehouse. You got to go outside, go down the street. And then unlock uh, uh, the toilets that are attached to the the better warehouses. I got the cheap one because, of course, I did. So they're like in. It's not like a porta potty. They re- they're actually they're actually really nice. And when I say really nice, they're like really nice for warehouse toilets. Like if you imagine warehouse toilets, yeah, that sounds shit. But they're as bad as good as warehouse toilets can get. They're actually clean. Like it fucking blows my mind every time I use it. I'm like, oh my god, they're clean, amazing. <laughs> But anyway, so I have to leave my warehouse and walk up the street to, to go to the bathroom. And it's like 11 p.m. at night. And uh, as I'm walking up the street, uh, this woman by herself, obviously one of the neighbors in the other warehouse, she starts walking towards her warehouse. And it's 11 p.m. at night. We've, we haven't met yet. She's never seen me before. It's this poor woman walking by herself, 11 p.m. at night. And there's just, to her, some strange giant man walking around 
a warehouse district for no reason. He shouldn't be here. There's no one else here. None of the warehouses are uh, open. There's no car. So it's just some crazy dude walking around a warehouse district at night. And I see her look at me and I, I just, I, I know the look of, oh, <laughs> this is it. I'm going to die. And I, I look at her and she's like, hi. And I'm like, oh, oh, hey. And, <laughs> and <laughs> to like alleviate her fear, I fucked up. I was like, oh, hey. And I, I saw that she was freaked out. So I thought, oh, I'll just be nice and that's fine. And I, I walked towards her. And I'm like, hi, my name's Lewis. And I went to shake her hand because, you know, we're neighbors. But you guys, you don't, <laughs> you don't shake. You don't move towards a woman at, when it's pitch black at 11 p.m. at night, like your mates, to shake their hand. Because, I don't know, that just sets off their fucking instincts of, oh, okay, I'm going to shake his hand, and then he's going to pull it and put me in a headlock, and then I'll be in the back of his boot. That's it. And then I'm done. And then I'm just another fucking headline of woman kidnapped in warehouse district. That's the end of me. So she stepped back, she freaked out, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in this warehouse. I just I just stepped right back and I was like, oh no, I'm in this warehouse. See, the lights are on. I'm in uh, I'm in that one. Anyway, I'm just using the bathroom. And she's like, okay. Scared the shit out of her, the poor woman. But I saw I saw her today and she was really nice. So I think she was just being <laughs> being safe as she should be. <laughs> oh fuck, dude. Uh, Jim's going really well, man. Uh, I mean, I made it every day this week so far. I do five days a week. I don't go seven. That's ridiculous. So I go five days a week. Uh, it's going really well, man. I've been waking up at six in the morning. Uh, I get to I get to sleep by like midnight. I read. I've been reading books. I've been going to the gym. I've been getting videos out too. I've uh, averaged two videos a week for a little bit now. I'm not gonna. That's not gonna be normal. It's just because I have stand up clips to put out. Um, I got one more stand up clip to put out on next Thursday. I'm gonna drop. Uh, I think, I'm, I think I'm going to drop Dreamworld. Uh, so if you haven't seen the comedy special yet, go on uh, loosebeers.com slash watch. Watch it for yourself. Um, and then uh, when I do drop Dreamworld, uh, it, it'd be amazing if you guys shared it around because, I, you know, it's if you've seen it, you know that it's real. That's a fucking banger. And I want a lot of people to see that one because I think it'll cause a bit of controversy. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, if you when you see me drop Dreamworld on Thursday, share that shit around because uh, I, uh, I think it's a really good bit and I want a lot of people to see it. Um, I had some guy I had some guy hit me up and he's like, "Man, man, stop posting clips from the special." And it's like, because he had already seen it. And he was like, "Oh, if I guess maybe he felt ripped off. Maybe they thought that I was going to post all of it. I'm not. I'm only going to post these two clips. So I post the fucking I put up the the wanking bit tonight, and then next week I'm going to put up Dreamworld, and then that that'll be it. I won't put up any more clips at all." Um, Cause I don't know, man. I view it like a, uh, I view it like a fucking album. You know, the the musician drops his album, he puts out two of the bangers publicly for free, and then hopefully that makes everyone listen to the album. Same shit that I'm doing. I'm just putting out putting out two of the bangers and then getting everyone else to fucking download. Cause at the end of the day, man, I want everyone to fucking see this thing. So uh, you can't, you know, you can't not give them a taste of it. So yeah, man, I'm just putting out those two clips and then don't worry, I'm not gonna fucking, I'm not. I'm not posting the whole thing. So if you so if you are sitting there just waiting, thinking, ah, he'll post the whole thing. Sorry. One more clip, and then that's it. And I, I recommend that you watch the full special before I drop that clip because I'm dropping a real good bit. Uh, it's not the best bit. Uh, the best bit comes after that, but um, it is very, very good. And, uh, it you know, obviously, it works better in, in within as part of the show instead of being chopped out. But, you know, hey, i got to fucking market this thing. i got I got to get cunts to see it. That's the only way I can get my name out there. I can't just be the guy who never posts fucking stand-up clips ever, and you have to guess if I'm any good. Um, so yeah, man, life's life's great. I've been going to gym. Uh, I've been going really well. I've been <laughs> I've been posting a I've been posting a lot more on fucking Instagram, and Snapchat, and that shit. Uh, I just post when I'm at the gym because I don't know for, because because you know why? Because fuck you. That's why, huh? Because it's fucking Snapchat. So it's Snapchat and it's Instagram stories, right? I put good shit everywhere else. I'm on, if I'm on Snapchat, I'm going to post garbage of me in the fucking gym. All right? Fuck you. That's why I do it. But what's funny is I always get, every time I post something in the gym, I always post, oh, oh you're a fucking skinny cunt. It's like, yeah, dickhead. Why the fuck do you think I'm at the gym? You fucking moron. 
I swear, I never get called a skinny cunt until I post pictures of me at the gym. Which doesn't make any sense. It's just like you wouldn't see a fat cunt in the gym be like, ah, look at that fatty. It's like, no, you call them a fatty when they're not at the gym, all right? When they're at the gym, you go, oh, good on them. All right? So I'm happy. I'm fine, man, with the skinny cunt comments. Just put it on my Instagram. I don't care. If I post a photo, go, go, go nuts, man. I don't care. But if I'm at the gym, if I'm at the gym, man, all I want is positive reinforcement. Fuck this Fuck you, skinny cunt, when I'm at the gym, all right? Why do you... Yes, why do you think I'm there? It's like if you saw a fucking cancer patient doing chemo, you wouldn't run up and smack them on the head and be like, hey, baldy, you got cancer, do you? You fuck... It's like, no, you wouldn't. They're trying to fix it, man. They know. They know, all right? Why do you think I'm there? Because I'm six foot eight. Another, Another one that's funny is like, some people are like, oh, you've been skipping leg day. It's like, no, I, they're just giant. They're just fucking, I feel like, I feel like, I, I reckon I could, de- I could fucking squat a thousand kilos and my legs would still look exactly the same because the amount of fucking mass that needs to spread out along the leg is ridiculous. So, hey, man, body shame me all you want, but when I'm at the gym, all I want is fucking Go, good job, man. Fucking cunts. No, oh, you skinny. But, you know, yeah. But at the same time, I am a very fucking skinny cunt. And, uh, I don't know, man. I, ne- I never got, I never got the, uh, the, the body shaming thing. Because to me, I, I feel like all, maybe this is just the kind of person that I am where, where if I see a problem, I want to fix it. So if someone points out the problem, I'm like, yeah, okay, good point. I should fix that. I should get better. Because, you know, cunts comment that shit all the time. Oh, you fucking skinny cunt. It doesn't bother me. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I am that. And I'm and I'm trying to fix that. So one day I won't be that. So at the moment, you're correct. But pretty soon, it won't be a valid comment. And then, I, and then I'll be a better person. And you'll be correct. And we did it together. Thanks for the motivation. I know, I, n- I never got the, oh, uh, you body shaming me. It's like, well, dude, you're, you're fucking fat as fuck, dude. You're, you're, it's only, sh- you know what it is? It's only fucking shame if you feel it, isn't it? Or am I a psychopath? Because, because you know what? It's, it's only shame if you feel shame. Because otherwise it's just a fact. If someone calls you a fat cunt and you're a fat cunt, you're a fat cunt. And if, and if you're not ashamed of it, good on you. Then it's just, then you can just be like, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, a tree isn't ashamed when you call it a tree, is it? I mean, I suppose it, it's a bit different if someone's like, you're a fat cunt and that's why you must die. But not many people are doing that. In my experience, anyway. No one's like, hey, you're a skinny cunt. Jump off the West Gate. No one's done that. Everyone's just like, hey, you're a skinny cunt. And I just go, yes, I am. I'm trying to fix that. One day I won't be. I suppose if I was self-conscious about it, I'd be like, oh, I'm a skinny guy. No, don't tell me. I'm trying to hide from reality. That's what all that, all that shit is. Stop fat shaming. It's like, hey, man. Hey, how about you stop being ashamed of being fat? So that if people call you fat, you'll be like, yeah, I am fat. Thanks for the fact. <laughs> it's weird, man. What the fuck do I know? Dude, I've I have ever since I ever since I dropped this the comedy special and I come back from the cruise, I've got so much time. I've finally been able to use like the warehouse properly. Um it's really really great. Uh like I'm getting in a guy uh I'm actually looking for an editor and a camera person at the moment cuz you know, I want to, I want to put that Patreon money to good use. So I just bought this gear and then now I want to have like a regular editor that comes in uh, maybe maybe at least once a week, maybe twice a week. I don't really know. It depends. I need to work that out. I've never worked with someone regularly before. But uh, if you're listening to this and you're from Melbourne, you have to be from Melbourne. I'm not fucking around with uploading and, and downloading. I'm sorry. I had a bunch of people reach out to me being like, oh, we can edit over Google Drive. It's like, no, fuck off. I can't. I'm sorry. Can't do that shit. My internet sucks. And uh, I'm not de- I'm not dealing with it. I don't know how the fuck PewDiePie does that shit. Um, but if you're a, if you're a, a camera person or an editor, uh, 
especially if you use Final Cut, um, send an email to contact at loosebeers.com if you'd be interested in uh, uh, being a, my regular editor. I'm looking for someone uh, once, maybe twice a week. I can't pay that much money, but I can pay. Um, you know, I can pay you for it. Basically, what I'm looking for is someone to cut up, uh, edit all of my videos. So, you know, Lou Review, Bi Monthly Bull, uh, cut down the podcast into little clips for the clips channel that I started and never started uploading to. Um, you know, just a fucking, just a fucking editor. Uh, and then to, to help me do that shit so that I can focus more on creating and uh, make better shit. Because at the end of the day, I would rather someone who's better at editing than me. So if that's you, send an email to contact at loosebeers.com with previous work. Send me previous work. If you do not have previous work, I will not waste my time. Um, but yeah, hit me up. I'm, I'm trying at a guy, uh, tomorrow and I'm, I, w- I want to try a few people because so often I, I, I've one person emails me. I'm like, you're the guy and they're not the guy. So I want to try a few people. So if that's you hit me up. Um, all right. What am I going to do? Sorry. This, this podcast wasn't very fucking interesting. I didn't really do anything this week. I need to start. I'm going to start doing more shit now. Now that the special's out and like the hype is you know, I've done, I've done the hard bit, putting it out and all that kind of shit. It's, uh, time to just fucking relax and get back to normal. Uh, and, and when I say that, uh, what I really mean is, uh, (laughs) fucking get ready for the tour. Uh, I do have a tour coming up and actually the tour might be on pre-sale next week. Looking at my calendar. I think it actually might be. Um, but if you're on the gig list, loosebeers.com slash gig list, you chuck your email in your city in there and you'll get an email when tickets go on sale. But yeah, the, the, the tour starts in September 14 is the first date. It's all locked in. We just need to put it on sale. And I think it's going on sale and I think it's pre-sale next week, actually. I don't know. It's either next week or the week after. But I, I will let you know. I will, I will make a lot of noise about it, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it goes on pre-sale and then it goes on uh, general sale. And I, I think... I think that uh, I'm going to (laughs) sell, I think I'm going to sell way more tickets than, I think we kind of fucked up. We booked shows that are too small because I haven't toured for 18 months uh, and the comedy specials come out and I've got radio and uh, my online stuff has like exploded since I last toured. Uh, But we booked shows ages ago. Uh, I think I'm going to sell the fuck out. And like a a big indicator for that is uh, there are twice as many people on the mailing list, the gig list, than there are tickets available. So, uh, (laughs) I I mean, theoretically, if 50% of the people on the gig list buy tickets, which is not that many, if half of them buy tickets, if half of them buy one ticket, that's, that's, that's not even buying one for their mate too, or their family or whatever, if... Half of the people on the gig list buy one ticket for just for themselves to come alone. The tour will sell out in pre-sale. So uh, get on the gig list, I guess. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe we'll have a fucking Justin Bieber situation going on where it sells out in a second. I don't think that'll happen. All right, I, mean, I might, It might. I mean, that'd be cool. But uh, I'm not counting on it because then I'll just feel depressed. <laughs> um, but yeah, the tour's going to go on sale e- either next week or the, or, the, or the week after. I can't really remember. But I will be making a lot of noise about it on all my socials. You'll, you'll know the date. So just pay attention to my fucking Facebook or my Insta and all that kind of shit. You'll see it. All right. With that being said, shall we get into miscellaneous bit at the end? Oh, no. Before I want to do that, I wanted to uh, say a uh, quick update about all of the uh, crowdfund rewards and everyone who's backed it. So uh, with everyone who, who backed it and uh, sorry, everyone who backed the crowdfund and everyone who purchased from my website when it came out and was released, uh, physical merchandise is going to be sent out over the next two weeks. I don't know if you can see that gigantic stack of boxes. That right there is a uh, a thousand DVDs. And uh, I have I think I think half of them are already sold. I can't really I haven't looked at it for a while, but but fuck loads of them are gone. Uh, we have and over over to my left, there's a big shelf over there that's full of fucking t-shirts and hoodies and all that kind of shit. It's all organized but we have to send out how it works is the money f- 
came through from everyone's orders. It comes through at the start of every mo- every month. So we had to wait for that before we could post it out because there was so many orders we couldn't afford postage. Uh, but now obviously we can because people pay for postage and now I have that money. Uh, what's going to happen is over the next probably two weeks, I don't want to promise sooner than that, we're going to be sending out everyone's orders. So that's everyone from the crowdfund and everyone from purchasing on my website. That's going to take a while. Please have some patience. We have never, ever had this many orders. I think the most I've ever sent out in one week was like 30, 40 things, maybe. Because, you know, people buy shit throughout the year, but it's never more than 30. It's usually more like seven things a week that I send out. This is is literally hundreds. Uh, it, it's probably over 500 things that I need to send out. T-shirts, DVDs, posters, all that kind of shit. So have patience. It's all coming. We have not forgotten. You should get emails when it's on the way, but um, it's going to take us a while. We've never done something like this before. So I'm hoping in the next two weeks, it could take longer. I don't really know, but it's all coming. Thank you very much. Um, And then once we get through this backlog, it'll be back to normal, like once every three or four days is when I'll be posting shit out. So, you know, uh, if you want to get your shit, or loosebeers.com slash watch. All right. Anyway, so let's do miscellaneous bit at the end. Oh, also, I'm moving the microphone. Let me know. I'm just touching the arm because I will move it every now and then. But if you hear like sounds of me moving the microphone, just tell me to, to not fucking touch it and I won't touch it. But, but from what I understand, I think I can move the mic without it fucking with you. All right, so let's get into Miscellaneous Bit at the End. If you don't know, uh, Miscellaneous Bit at the End is the worst part of the podcast. It is the part of the podcast where I answer question, questions sent in by listeners. If you have a question or if you need some life advice or if you have a cool story you think I would like uh, or anything like that, send it to podcast at lewspears.com. Summarize it in the subject line. Don't write your whole life story. I won't read it if it's too long. Um, but, you know, three, four paragraphs max uh, and... Uh, make it entertaining and uh, it might make it on the podcast. I'm getting a lot of them now, which is really, really good. So, but keep them up because every time I have heaps, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. The next week they're all gone. (laughs) Um, All right. We've got an update email, which are my favorite emails because uh, we get to check in and see how, uh, if people have applied my advice or thought that I was a fucking idiot, probably rationally and and ignored me. Um, All right. My asexual ex response and decision. So uh, this is a guy from, I think, maybe two podcasts ago. He had uh, uh, an ex-girlfriend come back into his life, but she's found out that she is asexual, meaning that uh, she doesn't ever want to fuck ever. Um, So she just doesn't have sex with anyone. And he was like, he is not asexual. He was like, oh, I really want, I I, want to fuck her, but I can't. But maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe I could have a relationship with her even though she's asexual. And my uh, my advice was, hey, man, how about don't do that? That's essentially like having a lesbian girlfriend. I mean, you guys are going to have some really good dates. But at the end of the day, your dick's going to be like, all right, that was a really fun picnic. But when are we putting it in her mouth? And and you, I thought you would just come to resent her. I mean, it's like, you know. It, it, it would literally be like if you had a fucking lesbian girlfriend and you wanted to fuck her, but she was like, hey, sorry, I just don't fuck dudes. I feel like you'd come to resent her. So that was my advice was, hey, walk away from it, man. There's plenty of girls out there. And no matter how good someone's personality is, if they are a different sexuality to you, probably not going to work. <clears throat> and that's not to say that, you know, if you're in a relationship, you're entitled to sex. But uh, that is to say that it's uh, definitely a really important thing. If you're not asexual, and it's something that, it, that if it's not happening, you've probably got a problem. Um, my asexual ex response and decision. Uh, g'day, cunt. Aaron again. First off, congrats on the special. I saw it and I absolutely loved it. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, I thought I would clear up what I said in the last email since my wording was poor and let you know what my current mindset is after hearing your advice. I haven't read this yet. Uh, firstly, what I meant to say about the antisocial thing was that she thinks that instead of being asexual, she thinks it could be nerves from being antisocial, depressed and anxious. Right. Okay, so maybe she's not asexual. She's just so nervous that she she's just never horny, or she's never relaxed enough to feel like she wants to want some dick. So she's not sure if she's mentally stable enough to know if she's asexual or not, or not. 
but she's fairly confident that she is asexual, full stop. Um, and no, I didn't think I don't care if she's asexual the first time I saw her. He wrote in the email was the first thing that came into his head was, I don't care if she's asexual. And I was like, no, you didn't, man. You didn't think that because no one's like, wow, she's amazing. I don't care if I can't fuck her. No one thinks that. Uh, no, I didn't think I don't care if she's asexual the first time I saw her. What I meant to say was, once my crush for her had been strong for a while, I started to admire her for who she is, and I was really just interested in getting to know her. I'm not sure why I even mentioned that in the last email, but I'm glad you got, got a laugh out of my stupid comment. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, after hearing your advice, my current mindset on the situation has changed. A part of me is still a little bit confident in it, but the more I think about it, the more I think it would be a bad idea to pursue. Uh, I feel like it wouldn't be fair on either of us because, like you said, we want the exact opposite of each other, and that realistically wouldn't work at all. Also, we're both depressed, so I feel like there's, I feel like like that's an aspect that won't mix in well. So, f so for now. Uh, I'm going to stay neutral on it. If we still stay in contact, I feel like we won't be any more than friends and that's the best case scenario. If anything big happens, I'll be sure to update you. Have a shit one. Aaron. Uh, yeah, man, I think you've done the right thing, dude. I think for sure. I mean, I mean, really, if you stay friends, is that any different from what was going to happen anyway? Other than you, you would put the girlfriend label on it and then you would want to fuck her, but she wouldn't want to fuck you. I mean, if you put the friends label on it, at least both of you are, uh, both of you know that it's not going to happen. So you don't have to kill yourself over it. Neither does she. Uh, and I, I don't mean that because you're depressed. I mean, like, you don't have to fight. <laughs> Poor choice of words there. Uh, I mean, like, you don't have to feel shit about wanting to have sex with her, but she doesn't want to have sex with you. Um, I think you've done the right thing, man. And, um, and also, hey, if you're struggling and you're you're depressed or whatever, you I I would say that a, a relationship is probably the last thing you need because obviously you need to work on yourself and make sure that you're okay. I really do think, and this is probably like my strongest belief in life. I don't think that a relationship can work if if it's not two complete individuals. No one's ever completed by a relationship. It needs you need to be okay by yourself because how the fuck can you work out? how to treat someone else if you don't even know how to treat yourself. Um, so I would say, yeah, man, just have fun. Be single, be young, work on yourself. Maybe talk to someone, get a therapist or whatever. If you're struggling with depression, talk to people around you. Uh, if you're in Australia, you can get mental health care for free. Uh, you just need to tell your doctor that you're depressed and he'll literally prescribe you like three or four therapy sessions. I did it when I was younger. I did it when I was a teenager and it really fucking helped me. So go do it. I think, I think that everyone should talk to a therapist at least once in their life. It, even if they're not really struggling, just to figure out... Uh, 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 some, talking to someone that's like detached from that it sounds brutal but talking to someone that doesn't give a fuck about you but is paid to listen to your problems and problem solve is actually really beneficial because there's no emotions in it they don't have any vested interest like you know if you talk to like say your girlfriend for example uh, she has a vested interest in you obviously because she's your girlfriend. But if you talk to someone who's detached and, and away from the scenario, they can kind of give you good advice that isn't like, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that they won't get anything out of the situation. So they'll just give you good advice. So do that, man. Um, all right, next question. This is a good one. Oops, help. I had a threesome with my boyfriend and ex-girlfriend. This is from a girl called Amber. Uh, hey, can't call me Amber. So it was my birthday on Saturday and I invited all my idiot friends over to get fucked up. One of the people that I was hoping would come was a girl that I've had feelings for for a long time called Jasmine. I hope it wasn't my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is all... I mean, if it was, you should have just fucking emailed me about it. <laughs> We'd hook you up. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, this is all happening, even though I currently have a boyfriend. Okay, so you were hoping that you could cheat on uh, your boyfriend. So you're you're a bit of a you're a bit of a bit of a piece of shit. I mean, it's, I, I don't. I'm going to read the whole email before judging. This is all happening, even though I currently have a boyfriend. Initially, he was unsure if he wanted to enter a polyamorous relationship with me, but after a while, he finally decided to give it a try and let me date Jasmine while I was with him. 
Okay, that's cool. See you guys trying it. This plan seemed great at first. Okay, I'll take it back. Obviously not a good idea. (laughs) She had agreed to be my goth girlfriend while drunk at my house, but the next day told me that she really loves me. Yeah. This polyamorous shit, man, doesn't work. I mean, first of all, fuck scheduling a date. It's already fucking impossible for me and my girl to go on a date with each other at the... When we're both free, we're both so fucking busy. I couldn't imagine bringing a third into it. Um, for a date, anyway, for a relationship, anyway, like a long-term thing with with two other people, that's fucking crazy. I don't know. How, I don't know how you could be fucked. Uh, probably from both ends. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Uh, she told me she really loves me, but it was too hard for her to be with me while I was with someone else. I was hoping to see Jasmine at my birthday party to tell her that if she ever changes her mind, my boyfriend and I are still open to her being part of our relationship. Unfortunately, she could not go due to her having work the next day. What happened on the night of my birthday was that I started to talking to my ex-girlfriend, Sarah, or your other ex-girlfriend, Sarah, who I'm still good friends with and don't see very often. It was strange talking to her after all the time we hadn't seen each other because it was like talking to a completely different person. While I was talking, while I was dating Sarah, she thought she might be asexual. What is with all of these fucking lesbians and asexual podcast fans? Where are they coming from, man? I can't work it out. I mean, good on you, fuck who you want, but I don't, I don't know where, I don't know what it is about me that attracts all these fucking lesbians. Where are they coming from? Do I have like a giant neon sign that follows me around that says Dyke's very welcome? I don't understand it. When I was dating Sarah, she thought she might be asexual and she was an incredibly wholesome person. But now she has threesomes and gets fucked up almost every night of the week. (laughs) All right, well, hey, as long as she's living her best, best life... It's a, dude, where are all these? Where were all these threesomes when I was fucking a teenager? Where, where this chick's eighteen? What's going on? Where was this shit when I was eighteen? I fucking missed the boat, man. Crazy. Um. At some point during the night, she confessed, dude. If I was eighteen and I had a fucking and I was in a polyamorous relationship with two other girls, I'd, I'd be fucking killing it. I'd be like, fuck exams. Man, where was that shit when I was 18? Oh, it pro- you know what? It probably was around, but I was a fucking loser. <laughs> you know, yeah, what am I saying? Like, if, if that was around when I was 18, that I would be invited? No, it was probably happening, and I wasn't fucking invited, was I? Oh, man. Uh, where are we? Uh, she thought I might. She, she thought she might be asexual. Now she gets three sims and fucked up every night of the week. At some point during the night, she confessed that she regretted breaking up with me and told me that she still loves me. Dude, you must be the the most beautiful, ge- most beautiful, most lovable woman on planet Earth. I mean, if you know what, if you're fucking hooking up threesomes left and right, I I'd probably fall in love with you too. <laughs> um, she told me that she still loves me. Later that evening, my boyfriend and I were in my room having some great sex, and Sarah walks in. I ended up having my first ever threesome with my boyfriend and ex-girlfriend, which was great because it was also the, the first time I've ever fucked a chick and I've been dying for some good puss. Dude, you lost your virginity in a three... Oh, no, you didn't, you're an idiot, Lewis. You, she didn't lose her virginity. She was having sex and then she... You're a fucking retard, man. You First time I ever had sex with a girl and I've been dying for some good puss. After that all happened, I felt awful because I love Jasmine and I know she still cares deeply about me. I'm not sure if I do have a chance of being with Jasmine, but I feel like I've fucked that up now. Should I tell her about the threesome or just keep it to myself? I'm very worried that I've pushed her away for good. Thanks, Lewis. Have an even shitter one than my friends that were drowning in my own in their own vomit. Hey, uh, what's your name? Hey, uh, fucking Amber. Uh, it sounds like 
Uh, I think your real issue here is uh, you need to break up with your boyfriend because he didn't come up at all other than uh, a dick. I don't know what you're doing. You obviously like, you seem to just like girls, man. I mean, you're listening to this podcast, which is a very strong indicator of being a lesbian. If there ever was a litmus test to am I gay or not, if you listen to the Spearhead Sundays podcast, you're probably a muff diver. Uh... I just I don't know I just find it funny that you have you're having this dilemma of oh which girl should I fall in love with when there's this dude just following you around behind in the in the background being like hey well, maybe we should go see a movie or something and you're just sitting there like I don't know what to do do I love Jasmine or do I love Sarah and then your boyfriend's just in the background being like hey do you want I'm gonna get popcorn do you want popcorn let's see Incredibles too. <laughs> Uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I think that you need to uh, calm down a little bit. Uh, you've got a boyfriend. Um, and there's a girl who doesn't want to be in a polyamorous relationship. So you can't force them to do that. Um, so either you leave your boyfriend to go and be with that girl. Or you just be happy with your boyfriend and stay on the lookout for another girl who would be happy with a polyamorous relationship i mean maybe it's this other chick that you had a threesome i can't believe that i'm i'm so i'm so underqualified to to do to do this kind of and i'm speaking like like oh yeah so this happens to me and my girlfriend all the time i'm always falling in love with other women and (laughs) um i think that you need to calm down a little bit in with the other girl and you need to sit back and you need to think about what do you really want Do you really want to be with this girl or are you just being like the grass is greener and you're just thinking that you want it because you can't have it? Um, And if you are thinking that, hey, maybe you don't want to be with your boyfriend uh, or maybe you really want to have a fucking polyamorous relationship, whatever that means, so you should just find another girl who is okay with it. Uh, Either way, I... I am very jealous of you and I wish I had your life. <laughs> That's such a good problem to have. Obviously, everyone loves you and they want to fuck you and you're just living in threesome city and you're spoiled for choice. Uh, but yeah, my serious advice would be to maybe calm down a little bit and have a real think about what you want because you you are asking for a lot. Like a polyamorous relationship is a big fucking deal and... Uh, Obviously, as you would know, a very, very rare person is someone who would be into that. So uh, either you keep on hunting for the unicorn who would be okay with that, or maybe you should just be single. Or maybe you should date this girl and be, you know, stick to that, stick to that one girl for a little bit. Or maybe you should just stick with your boyfriend and have crazy threesomes every now and then. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I think that, uh, yeah. Cool it. Calm down a little bit. Think about what you want and think about how you, how your boyfriend and all these other people fit into that. Um, because end of the day, you cannot force someone to live in your very weird, uh, very demanding lifestyle. It's a fucking huge ask to be like, hey, do you want to date me and uh, while I date someone else? Because I don't know how that works. I mean, is she also supposed to fall in love with your boyfriend or are they both just supposed to love you? Which both of those things is such a huge ask because what if she doesn't like your boyfriend or if you're asking both of them to love you, uh, what if they don't like each other? I mean, that's, I don't know. It's, there's so many fucking variables there. I think you need to sit back and realize that you're asking for fucking heaps in this situation. And uh, I don't know. You don't always get what you want, man. Sometimes you want a bit of fucking pussy and a bit of dick. And you want them to love you, and you want them to be okay with those, each other loving you at the same time, and you don't want anyone to fight. I don't know. It just seems like a very hard situation that you're in. So think about what you really want, man, and do that shit. And let me know how it goes. Let me know how to live your lifestyle, man. Sounds sick. <laughs> uh, and then the, the last one, I'm doing three because I only did one last week. Uh, <clears throat> This is just a quick one. Uh, Comedy special. 
Hey, Lewis. Uh, after seeing your special at the Brisbane screening and then getting the digital download and watching... Uh, oh, this isn't a normal one. This is just a fucking... This is just a, uh, this is just a nice note that I wanted to read because uh, it made me... Uh, I don't know, it made me smile. And uh, I appreciate the, all the feedback. And this is what I was talking about last episode. I'm, j- I'm just getting really genuine, nice feedback. And I wanted to show you guys what I'm getting and that I appreciate it. Uh, hey, Lewis. Uh, after seeing your special at the Brisbane screening and then getting the digital download and watching it again and then watching the commentary, I can without a doubt say that this is some of the best shit ever thank you despite the lack of pairs it was still incredible you managed to create some of the funniest and well put together uh material uh i've ever seen and i know this sounds exactly like everyone else uh but that's because it's true thank you uh i went from laughing stupidly hard to almost losing it uh and crying when the in memory section of the commentary happened that was a proper roller coaster and i loved every minute yeah I, in the commentary the commentary is fucking nuts man it starts off funny and then it gets in depth about how he made it and then it ends and then i start to cry and then it gets a little bit awkward and then we start talking about shrek and then we start laughing again and then there's like five minutes of shrek jokes and then we end it because we don't know how to end it it's a whole fucking thing go and listen to it um i know that it's only up from here and if netflix stan uh, or something else, don't pick you up for specials and, and projects, it's their loss. If that doesn't happen, I'll be very disappointed in them because they clearly wouldn't be able to see greatness even though it was c- calling them a cunt to their face. <laughs> Look at that, three paragraphs, have a shit one. Hey, thank you, man, I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, I would really like it to, to get it on streaming services or if, if, you know, if it's not this one, it'll be the next one. I've, I really do believe that. And it's the kind of thing where you know, I mean, that's why I turned down that big distribution company because I, I just wanted one for me. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I feel like owning your own comedy special because they're so expensive to do is so rare. And I thought, hey, I don't think I'll I, potentially. I may never get this chance ever again. So I like that I that I've I've got my one. I own my one, and it's, and it's my little thing that that we well not my thing. It's our thing. We did it together. Um, but I, I definitely do want to do you know, Netflix or streaming services or whatever fucking happens next. I definitely want to do that uh, in the future. And it's the kind of thing where I can be like, hey, you want to make my next one? You can have my old one for free too. Uh, But it will always live on my website. And I'll be like, yeah, they've got it. But you know what? It's fucking mine. It's on my website. Um, So thank you very much for listening, guys. And thank you to everyone who's who's got the special, who's told told friends about it. Uh, I, I would really, if I could ask for anything... Um, share those clips that I'm putting up. So I put up the wank bit and then next Thursday I'm going to be putting up the dream world bit. Please do share them. They are to get people who have not got it or who haven't heard of me interested in my stand up and what I do. Um, and, uh, that's why they're being shared and that's why we're putting them out there. So, uh, please do tag a friend, even if you just like them or share them or message them to a mate who you think would like them. Uh, I would really appreciate that. That's why I put up the wank bit, which is a little bit silly, not too dark. And then I'm putting up the dream world one. So, you know, if you've got a mate who likes silly stuff, send them the wank bit. If you've got a mate who likes fuck stuff, send them dream world. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Thanks for sharing. You can get my comedy special at lewspears.com slash watch. Um, oh, also I've, uh, for the people who got the, just the $5 download, everyone's harassing me about the commentary. What I've done is I've updated the, the my Gumroad site with an option to buy just the commentary uh, for cheaper. So you, you know you're not paying for things twice because uh, heaps of people hit me up about that. I think I've sent an email to every single person who bought the $5 download. So if you have the $5 thing, even if you backed it on Indiegogo, check your emails. There should be a link to get the commentary. It's not on my website because I didn't want people to buy it by accident and then be like, and then they watch the commentary first because I know so many people would do that. But I have posted the link on my Twitter. So if you scroll or you just search Lewis Spears commentary, you should be able to find it on Twitter. Um, Otherwise, go on gumroad.com and search my name and you can find my profile there and you'll see all of the products. Um, so yeah, check your emails or whatever. It's a thing. If um, uh, Or actually, probably the best, road, best way to do it is just Google Gumroad Lewis Spears and you'll find my profile on Gumroad. Um, and then you can get the commentary for cheaper and you don't have to spend extra money and all that kind of shit. Um, but for everyone else, if you haven't seen it yet, lewispears.com slash watch. Uh, Thank you very much for listening. Leave a rating. Join the Speared Sundays group on Facebook. We post heaps of fucking memes in there. And uh, I will see you next Sunday. Um, 
Oh, fuck, it's like 11.30 on Thursday night. Oh, cool, Patreons will get this one on Friday. Yeah, and if you want to support me on Patreon... Ah, you, you guys know, there's heaps of shit. I'm done plugging. Thank you for listening. I will talk to you next Sunday. And uh, have an incredibly fucking shit one. Let me know about the sound as well. I want to know, I want feedback on the sound. All right, I'm done, I'm done. See you later.